What's up, man? So how did uh, how did the guys respond to the how did practice go yesterday compared to last week? Um, practice went the way I wanted it to go. Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> so we'll see. A little bit better. Um, obviously, few bright spots on Saturday, but uh, a die is crowd. <laughs> crowd. That's one. Next one. Deshaun a Foster. die. Deshaun Foster was there. <laughs> Coach Foster. Yeah. A die. Maybe. Um, you know, he's he's de look. I would tell you, a die has um, been through a long cycle, right? You know, he had no idea what he was getting into. Um, Shell shocked early, um, and really proud of the fact that he has not not gone the other way, right? Because a lot of young kids in his situation, um, it's easy to just say, "Well, I'm not being used right." Blame blame his teammates, blame his coaches. That's what the majority does. Um, sadly, in our country. Right, blame others. He has said, "I got to get better." So you definitely see improvement from a die nonstop, you know. Um, and he, you know he's he's going to be a really good player as he gets stronger and gets in better shape and improves his agility because of size and skill. Um, but college basketball is extremely physical, so for him, that you know, it's it's been a monumental adjustment. His but I'm proud of him. Yeah, his body language has been good. I've been watching him pregame, yeah. postgame. Yeah, you know, he's a, obviously he's extremely young. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just literally. Um, and then he looks even younger in the face. But he's intelligent. So I get, you know, and he's got very, uh, he's got he's got very good parents. So, um, you know, he, he understands. You know, when you have a good support system and you're taught right from wrong, um, you got a better chance in life, right? So that's how, you know, that helps him. But, you know, he's, he's, he, he's obviously, look, he, he would tell you he, he's wanted to do better. Um, but he hasn't taken, he hasn't taken the, 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 uh, the route that sadly most people take, which is just blame other people and play the victim. So he's just trying, and you see he's trying to get better nonstop every day in practice, you know, try to get better, try to get better. What uh, you talked about there is he needs to improve on. How much have you seen from start to now him make strides in those? Well, areas? his fight is yeah. better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his fight is better. Instead of asking the ref for, for, for fouls that aren't going to get called, you got, you know, his, his competitive toughness has gotten better, and that's why he's played better. Um, I think in other areas with his strength, his agility, um, his mobility, his conditioning, um, you know, those are all things that are gonna, it's going to take time and work with us and our staff, you know, um, that he'll get better over time. But just his, you know, his intestinal fortitude to compete, um, he's, you know, he's, he's adjusted. Over these last four games, um, obviously playing for some seeding in the Pac-12 tournament, how important is it to get in that top four? Yeah, I don't know. Um, first of all, I don't even think about that, and we don't ever talk about it. So I know, um, obviously, I know who you work for, and I know, you know, you need that talk. <laughs> you need all that talk. So, and I, I understand it, and all that talk, you know, and is good for college basketball because if people didn't care, uh, we ran out of the tunnel, all excited to play, and it was empty. It's not very fun. And sadly, we all learned that in 2020, <laughs> running out of that tunnel to, to an empty arena. Um, so, but no, I just don't, you know, and you, and you talk about conference tournaments, you know, all kind. in my opinion, all kind. I've seen all kind of people win them. At this, but, point, at this point in the season, uh, to me, you feel like a pretty self-assured person. But what's your sense of urgency? What do you mean? Like, you got four games left in the regular season, and, and if, you, if yeah. you were to lose the first game, in fact, you literally have five games left in the season. And you, yeah, we don't like, again, um, It'll take. It, I hope I'm, you're with me again next year, because okay. because you definitely work hard and and I I do notice things although I uh, don't read, um, so I can't critique your writing. Okay. So I apologize for that. Okay. But I know you work hard. 
All I care about is practice today. And when the season's over, then I got to care about uh, roster construction, meeting with players, develop, putting our team together for next year and coming to work and getting that, whatever the job to get done that day is that day. Um, so, yeah, I would say, I would tell you this, you know, the college, if you, you can't look at, it's just anything. You can't look at the totality of things, you know, because then you'll, you, you'll, you'll waste your day, whatever it may be, whatever it may be. And the sad thing is, we could also play to April, but you didn't mention that because of expectations, right? You're like, but this team's not going to play till April. But we don't let people define who we are. So we're just going to try to get better and see what the hell happens, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what we're going to do. Because you don't know. Now, I, I mean, none of us know. And the crazy part about this is, you know, if we were having this meeting a year ago and we, when we were all in here and you were here, you'd have thought we were playing till April. And then banging two guys get hurt, right? So you just never know what's going to happen. You just, you know, I've been doing this so long that uh, now you just don't know. So you also don't know how long you're uh, you're going to get to do it. So uh, you got to try to somehow get to a point mentally where you're enjoying it, despite the, how bad we played and how. Uh, mad up how, how I can let us play that bad somehow I got to get out of that mindset back to practice yesterday practice today so I do my job at the highest level I can do it because um, in the art of influence it's a very easy read it's a s small book um, they're not going to do it if I don't do it so if I'm walking around thinking ah, it's over in a couple weeks the, you know, what kind of leader am I? Then let me ask you this. How have you seen that in the past? How have you seen that game-by-game -game approach work where it does start to pile up and, you know, teams just continue on and they get better? And I will recuse them. myself, but I'll answer your question. I'll recuse myself. Okay. It worked really well for Nick Saban. Seven championships. And he almost had another one this year. Worked really, really well for him. You talked about not talking to anybody after the game. When, when does that kind of lift? When it's does very, that very hard. Lift? Well, for you know, we had to recruit him, so I had to, you know, which was probably healthy for me. From you know, my the dark place I go to. But you know, ha ha having the bookster helps me. You know, ha having the dog helps me. Mm -hmm. um, taking taking the dog for walks. You know he don't care if we win or lose. Yeah. He just wants a treat. <laughs> just he one wants more. he wants scratches. He wants his scratchies and he wants he wants a treat. Man, that's you know, and and he'd love a walk. Yeah. One more follow up on the Pac-12 tournament. Um, I guess what Dave was trying to get at, four games in four days versus three. I mean, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it. I, you know, I think it's overrated. To, I think that's overrated. I think the best team would usually win. The team that plays the best would usually win. So I've seen teams get hot. You're talking to a guy that saw Kimball Walker get hot. Not only did he win five in a row, then he won six in a row. <laughs> and I saw it firsthand. So, yeah, I've seen a lot. Yeah, I, th I think it's more important to play well. You know, I know you're, you guys are just looking at it from, you know, mathematically. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, guys, though, you're going to have to beat, you know, you're going to have to beat everybody, whether you're going to beat three really good teams or four good teams. You, you know, you're talking about winning tournaments, you know, there's no second place. So, you you know, I think it's way more important to have a, uh, to get a, a guard get really hot, a la what I mentioned, Kimball Walker. Yeah. Or, you know, like if you ask me right now, I would tell you a team that I shouldn't say it because I don't want to jinx anybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm a fan of R.J. Davis. I know him as a kid. I recruited him before while I was at Cincinnati. 
I've turned the last, I watch him get 42. I've seen him get there. You know, I see a kid like that, and I see a guy that could just go on a heater and just, you know, carry a team. Uh, three point shootings dropped off the last couple of games. Is that a function of ball movement or just oscillations and, you know? I will tell you, uh, our ball movement against Utah was good. We just didn't make shots. Um, but defensively, we didn't get the job done. We still could have, couldn't, should have won. But because um, that, that evolves with everybody. Against USC, I think um, we weren't ready. We, we came. I would equate it to this. To me, we, we came to a Saturday night dance, and when we got here, it was a, it, it was a fight. And all of a sudden, oh, oh, we, we came dressed up for a dance, a, you know, a dance party, and now we're, we're in a street fight, and it's hard to change. Uh, but our passing, to, in yeah. all seriousness, our passing was t- terrible against USC. Our pa- we should have had way more open shots than we did. 15 turnovers, um, and I, you know, I can't relive it. It's just, it was, it was really bad. I was, that's why I was so upset and so disappointed because we prepared, we knew, and um, guys just didn't do it. Do you feel like at this point in the season, some of your players are still passing up shots when they could just kind of catch it and live and shoot, or, or not you know, a ton? Okay, not a ton. Not really. Anymore. I would say Saturday. I thought our passing was as bad as it's been. Oh, it, it reminded when we were playing our worst basketball. That's the team I saw play it Saturday. The team that just we were not passing the ball; we were forcing it and turning it over. I remember your first year. You said you took away the, I guess the UCLA gear, made them play in shells and practice. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Have you done that again? Oh yeah. The last week? No. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. Previously though. Yeah, I just didn't tell you about it. Okay. Um, you know, like you asked about Monday, it's just look. It's just real simple, man. Like you can't change. Like the standard's got to be the standard. And um, if you're going to play here, you got to listen, and you got to have great attitude and great effort. You know, if you're going to play here and stay here. You mentioned putting guys on the treadmill. What would be a trigger for that? Guy, if I said, "Hey Ben, quit leaning on that pole." I turn around, you're leaning on the pole. You didn't have to step away from it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, I mean, just something, it means something so ridiculously egregious that it's like, you kidding me? I just told you, like, so it was just a bad week, bad week of practice. What I've learned is historically, what I, I would tell you is we had a similar record my second year at Murray State. We had, Won thirty something games, had it, went to the NCAA tournament my first year. I thought I was the next coach Wooden. I really did, I, you know. And uh, you're young, you think, oh my God, you know, I get a job at thirty one. Um, and then guys graduated, and I had to start over. And we had talent, we had some talent, but we couldn't get it done night in and night out. And that's the problem with younger teams. You can't get it done night in and night out. You know, like you guys have asked me what this reminds me of all year, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't remind me of my first year here. It reminds me of my second year at Murray State. Because we, I had, I lost a lot of players off a team that won 30 plus games. My yeah. first year here was just my first year. But that year, you know, that, that was a very, you know, 30 plus wins, great team, um, unbelievable season. Uh, and then guys graduated. And I realized I was far cry from Coach Wood. <laughs> <laughs> Everything didn't work quite as well my second year. But that you know, the, then the following year, that team was great. You know, this that that they needed a year of growth. Is that a pitch for continuity with this team and trying to keep as many of these guys together? I mean, because you know, well, they, the different world. Obviously, yeah. back then there were nobody's going anywhere. Right. You know, that's a whole nother. We'll see how the offseason. But I guess, uh, you know, even if you brought in, say, three transfers, they've got to learn your system, and then that's kind of like a, a, a rebuild in its own right, right? Depends. Depends, okay. Depends. You still got to, you know, what, 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 you, you got to have a core group of guys. It's like I told you, my, my friend, that I can't give you his name because I don't want you outing him if he 
you find out he was wrong about his, he's, you know, his six, and he, you have more than six transfers, no, none of those teams are going to make it at large, you know. So, yeah, I think you got to have a core group of guys that, that have played. You got to have a couple guys who played. You know, if you're going to have a great team, you got to have some good returning players. You can't have none. You know, so uh, doesn't mean we can't add. Right. You know, to to our situation. Coach, you mentioned the winning era, and I guess it's funny, but are you ready to go back to the? I got a varsity squad and a freshman squad, and I can really just like develop these people before I need them. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, things about college basketball that are bad right now, really bad. And I would say the the era of that you allude to, it, the, the thing that scares me the most is development of people. And it just becomes, it doesn't, doesn't mean I'm against guys making money, but development of people. Um, Academically, socially, uh, emotionally, and all the 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 things that when you spend a lifetime in this, um, that you think that um, you feel good about that you're a part of, that it just becomes win lose, how much you make, how much they make. You know, those of us that have spent our careers in this. Um, as we see that um, fading in the sunset because the ship has sailed. That, that's the sad and scariest part of this. So when you allude to uh, errors, that's all that my mind goes to. Because that, that's who my dad was. That's who I've been. And I have a lot of friends and coaching. We all talk. I mean, it, you know, it's definitely a new era. It takes time. You need time for that. If you want to develop a person, you can't develop a person. Correct. Well, sometimes you can develop a person in a year, but most likely, you need more time. I would agree. Wholeheartedly, my friend. Wholeheartedly. All right, Will, you guys got anything else? Did you get any wooden stamps? Uh, we had, they, there was the same time as we had shoot around. So, okay. were they giving them away? I think they were selling them. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say the federal government's like that. <laughs> Did you get any? No, no, I didn't. I need some for collector's reasons. Yeah. All right, guys.